So this is going to be option one. I've just got a one millimetre wire here and 0 0.315 in the weaving gauge. Um, so I'm using a round cabochon. I will show you another option in a moment, but this is just to show you the technique. Uh, to begin with, I always like to leave at least five centimetres for the bale. Often you won't need that much. Depends how big you want the bale to be, but I like to have a little bit more. And what I am going to say is that this is for people with dexterity issues. So if you don't have issues holding multiple things, you probably won't need to do this as small as I'm about to do it. But because I do have dexterity issues, I need to have so many layers that will just automatically hold the cabochon before I would even think about doing the other options. So that's just something I want to start this video with. So I'm actually going to take a pair of bale making pliers because they are round and this cabochon is round. I'll show you how to do basically the same thing on this one in a moment. But so I'm going to take the biggest, which obviously in comparison is still pretty small uh, because I want those extra layers. So making sure I have enough length there. I'm just going to go around. Now that's probably still far too small and I could probably use a much smaller cabochon for this. But this is just to help you get used to it, get used to holding it. Um, I'm just going to cut this about the same length so we've got that extra there for the bale, the wire. And if you can see there, I've actually gone over slightly. Um, and again, this is all just about helping to secure it. So obviously this is significantly smaller than the cabochon I'm going to be doing, but that means that I get to do a couple of layers before I actually have to hold the cabochon. And that is important if you have dexterity issues because if you're trying to weave and you're having to hold the cabochon at the same time. So let's say we were doing it, there is another way, if you have no dexterity issues, you can do it this way. And the simplest way is to get the cabochon and just hold it down hold the wire at the same time sorry if my fingers are in the way here but obviously I've got to be very tight and pull 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 you know get it as small as you can as tight around there and pull it this way as well so basically that would just sit around the cabochon which means the first layer immediately goes around but you can't it keeps slipping through so when you're trying to mold around it you have to contend with that you could make it slightly smaller so that it just sits on it but again because you're having to do so much focusing on holding it and then weaving around it if you have dexterity issues and brain fog, you really need to just focus on one thing at a time, I find. And that's why it's just, in my opinion, easier to do it like this. And where we're doing this on a different shape cabochon, so say we were doing it on um, this oval shape. Um, I'll just cut a bit of wire one second. So I'd start again Let's move this and this over here for the moment. This one here. I would go like that to create the oval shape at the bottom. Knowing that that will then be able to just sit there. And then do another loop up here. <laughs> Don't kick everything out of the way. That's not helpful. Uh, so you need to leave, obviously need, leave a little bit of space. Bend that one that way that one that way so we've created this oval shape and then the same way we did a moment ago bend the wires back up we've got an oval shape then that is still small enough that we can have it there in the middle and obviously you can adjust this slightly if you want it to be more perfect 
um, but obviously because it's going to be behind and when we do the bail we actually end up hiding this pretty much anyway. So you don't have to be too perfect, especially not in this beginning part. It's more important that you have it small enough that you can do a couple of layers so that when it comes to adding the cabochon in you aren't having to fight the base wire the weaving wire and the cabochon because obviously like i say if you have dexterity issues your fingers aren't going to be able to do all that um i will mention about gluing it whilst i'm doing the tutorial and the glue i will suggest is this hypo cement this one is specifically for crafts and hobbies uh, and it's got crystals as one of the options on it uh, obviously these another name for these is crystals so just be aware of that um there is a fabric version don't get that one unless you're also working with fabric but this one's specifically better for these um and i'll show you the third one if you have a teardrop cabochon and this is probably the simplest one for you to do <laughs> because you, it's the easiest you would literally just do that and that and then cut whatever you need so those are your options for creating the base and we will start in a moment with the wire weaving if you were happy with this exact shape you can hammer it i personally prefer to just secure it with a little bit of wire because sometimes i will adjust it nearer the end uh, but yes yeah, so that's one option at this point you could either hammer it or like me you can secure it with a wire in just a moment okay so what's important to note before we start is how much wire we're going to need this weaving wire if you're using a 0.25 obviously that's a thinner gauge you'll use more 0.4 you'll use less also the size of the loops that you create will affect the amount of wire that you need um, and what i am going to say is again this is for people with dexterity issues and uh, brain fog etc if you are perfectly healthy you could cut off you know a significant length but if you're beginning or you have any you know spoony related issues chronic illnesses uh, i suggest never working with a length more than 50 centimeters in fact i often don't even go over 40 and i just add in the reason being that i don't have to fight the wire as much it's easy enough to add in and i will show you that um, so that's all I'm going to say at this point because obviously you want to see the actual tutorial rather than me rabbiting on. So I've cut in a length of about 40 centimetres. I'm not going to lie, I rarely actually measure because, like I say, I just add in whatever I need. And to begin with, I'm going to secure this bit just here. You can move these a bit further apart if you want. Obviously, when you start doing the bail, you'll probably move them anyway. So, as long as we keep this base at the same size and structure, we shouldn't have any issues. This also performs the dual uh, It's not a technique. <laughs> um, what would you call it? Sorry, brain fog's really bad today, guys. Ah. Uh, it also it acts as your anchor wire. I can't think of the word I was going to say. I must apologise. I also apologise if I'm shaking. I've just not been very well, which is why there's been less videos. I've also tried to film this video so many times. Okay, I'm just going to leave that there for now. I would finish it, but let's just start the actual tutorial so what we're going to do is we're going to go up through the base and this creates this loop here what we do is we actually come back through that loop okay so the wire's just got caught on itself over there but we come back through that loop the reason being that we want to create this second little loop here okay I'm just going to hold that there and what I like to do is actually pull these along now in the later layers I will make them more rounded but on this first layer we don't want more loops um, because later on if there's too many loops it causes problems so I always stretch them quite far out on this first layer 
and then I made them bigger on the later layers, uh, more rounded should I say, so I've come up through and then pull. Another top tip from me is to pull it this way, so the way you've weaved, because the second you pull it that way, you create this second loop you see, and that um, locks it into place, and if you want to make it small, you don't want to do that locking just yet, so only when I'm ready do I pull that way, and then I pull it as tight as I can, so that's just another little thing I picked up. Also try and go the same way every time, it does make a difference, maybe not on the first layer but in the later layers, um, the way they sit it does alter it, I mean you could do it for effect if you so chose but obviously we're just learning at this point so let's just try and keep it simple. Try not to get caught in any of the other wires. Okay. And that's really all I probably need for this first layer once I've stretched them out. Just need to do one across here. And we do that in the exact same way, you just make sure that you're coming over the front, whichever way you decided to do it. So if I decided to do it this way, this would be the front, I'm doing it this way. And basically that's because when we do the bail, if we've done one on the opposite side, we'd have to keep doing it that side and it would just cause problems. So just make sure whichever side you pick at this point is the side that you're sticking with, as in that is the, the front of the piece. Okay, so that is your first layer, nice and simple. Now I am going to be doing an option two video, which is where this then changes, but this is still only option one, so I'll just continue. What we do now is we continue the same way we have been doing the weave, but instead of going through obviously the base, we go through this layer. Now, had we done this directly just slightly around the cabochon we would actually be able to glue it at this point and hold it in place but because we've done this significantly smaller we would need at least two layers before we even considered gluing because we'd need to get back through but that is something you can do again if you do have dexterity issues and you haven't got the ability to hold multiple things at once just use a little glue the the hypo cement just dry clear Okay, try and hold the loops as well in place because you don't want them distorting the base layer. just continue like this. So what's everyone been up to recently? Has anyone done anything exciting? What about your jewellery makes? Have you made anything that you're particularly proud of? Let me know in the comments below. Oh and don't forget I've got a Facebook group. I'll link it. You know come and join. Show me what you've been making. Show me what you've been doing. Just have a chat. Tell me what you want to see in the future. That's just below. I think it's called Making Jewellery with KKJ, Kayla Cabana Jewellery. Um, yeah, it's like a little community I'm trying to create so that I can talk to you guys, you know, get to know you and um, yeah, just talk about jewellery making and life. And you know, if you are a spoonie, um, yeah, I think I mentioned at the beginning what spoonie is, if you do have a chronic illness, you know, ill health, you know, um, the internet is often our lifeline. So um, yeah, you know, come and have a chat and connect with people that have got similar interests. Okay. 
don't know if anyone noticed then, but the wire actually popped back forward because it's trying to fight with all these other wires. This is also why I don't cut off too much because the wire starts to work harden and starts to misbehave like that. And if you do have dexterity issues, you don't really want to be fighting you know, these huge long lengths. It's just easier to have a, a manageable length. Okay, so now I'm starting on the third layer and this is still pretty too small to be at the point where we're gonna go around. So I'm just gonna do another layer and I'll probably just fast forward this bit so you guys aren't getting bored. So at this point we're actually getting big enough that we're going to be able to weave around the cabochon now. So we don't actually need to hold it at this point um, but it is a good idea to get used to doing it. I'm not going to bother right now because with the length of this tail I'm probably going to have to weave it around at some point and hide it in weave um so i'm just going to continue doing another layer you may also notice that i started making the loops a bit bigger that's just something i like to do i start off small and grow them slightly until the last layer where i go back to doing them quite small as part of making sure i catch it i catch the cabochon <laughs> So we can start to mould the layer around. It's also why we started doing the loops a bit bigger. Put your nail in if you need to, you know, create that domed shape. Semicircle, half moon, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So now we're going to continue. I've probably got enough to just do a bit more. Now you're kind of doing it the opposite way now, so it probably, this is a point where it can get a bit confusing. But just remember to continue the way you had done it. Because at this point it's almost, you feel like you're not going back through, but you are because that loop's still being created, okay? You can see I just did that one a bit tighter. And that's because this is the layer that is going to catch. So normally when we've done it, we've gone up and then pulled it back through. Um, but it's actually forming with that in place now. So holding these loops, I'm just going to pull that a bit tighter. I don't want to just start the loops below. Okay. And back up again. And if we'd done it, we'd have gone that way and then pulled back, but we don't need to.
Okay, so I filmed that a little bit too close, so just peel it out. And pull it back. Just, yeah, wiggle it underneath. Use a pair of pliers if you have to. I've got this tiny bit of wire left and I'm just really hoping I can get it to go there because then I won't need to add in. But I'm still going to show you that technique. I just, if I can get away with it on this particular technique, I'm not going to. Now I almost went forward that time. Just be aware that you don't start making silly mistakes like that. Because it's so easily done. Okay, make sure you're back through. Okay, there you go. And actually, the way that's going to sit, I can actually just tuck that down here. So that was lucky. Completely not planned. And because it sits literally on top of that wire, that is how I would finish it if I was trying to, um, you know, trying to hide the weave in it. That's exactly what I do do. I fold it through them. But I'll show you it in the next mini bit of the tutorial. Okay, sorry, I can't really see this tiny little bit at this angle. Okay, I'm just going to cut that. So there you actually have a, a cork capuchon. And make sure you put all the wires back where they're supposed to be. And obviously this isn't going to fall out. It's completely secure. So we're going to look at adding in wire to the viking weave i've cut this bit here so that i'm going to end around one of these parts um i prefer to always do it here because it's easier to hide when you do the bail at the end but that's not always possible sometimes you're going to run out part way through and that's just something you have to content with so we're going to continue on until we get to the point where we can't do any more. Now when you're doing it with a short length it does become fiddlier. Um, so I always talk about using you know, more wire for leverage. So I'm just going to do one more loop here and that's where I'm going to stop. So I've got a tail about this big. Now what I'm going to do is I want to bring it down so that we're going to get it to the base and I always go whatever side we're going to put the cabochon in. So if I'm going to put the cabochon in this, this isn't the cabochon I'm going to be using but if I'm going to put the cabochon this way. I want to hide the wire within. If I decide to go on the outside, that'll be obvious at the end. I mean, obviously it's not hugely obvious, but to me it is. So I prefer to hide it within the weave and go forward. And for me, it's as simple as just going down this way. Okay. So we've just brought it down. You could thread it through some of these little loops on the way if you'd rather. It's up to you. And then really easily, we're just going to wrap it around. Sorry if my hands are in the way. This is obviously very fiddly. Wrap 
loop it around. Make sure you're going through that little loop as well. Hold it here so you don't distort it any. So there you go, I've got one. And same as when you anchor, just do a couple or three, you know. It's just basically to secure it and then we cut it. And that is as simple as it is. Okay, so I'm just going to finish that there. Get rid of that little bit of tail. And then you just take another length of wire, however much you want. And, you know, how many layers you're going to do depends on that. The amount isn't so important so much as the technique. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a few anchor wraps. Right next to where we just finished. Okay, I'm going to use the pliers again. These are a pair of Exuron pliers for those interested. Um, they're a bit dirty at the moment. Uh, they've just got some ash on them from candles I was burning. But um, these are really good, the length of them, where they sit in the palm and the comfort grip. So I recommend these for um, people with dexterity issues. They're really simple. And they, um, these are, I think they're called tweezer pliers. Uh, this ability to get into small spaces is really helpful. Especially because my fingers obviously can't do that. I mean, I don't think even perfectly healthy people can obviously do the same as a pair of pliers. Okay, that just kinked. That's not helpful. I'm going to cut that bit off. Okay, and then same again, just do a couple to anchor it. Okay, I'm just going to do those two for now. You can do as many as you want and feel comfortable with. Obviously this is just a tutorial. Make sure it's sat flat. Okay, I'm just so I twisted this forward because I want to bring it back up through again so that it's going to be sat in the cabochon. And what I like to do is get these right next to each other. I want to come up through this loop that we made last. So I'm going to put the wire through that loop there. We're not creating a new loop. We're not doing anything like that. We're just threading the wire through. sure that wire kinked a little bit there but it's fine so now what this does is it puts the wire exactly where it would have been had we just carried on if we hadn't had to cut anything off so now I can go to the next loop and in the exact same way continue on as I had been doing Oops, sorry I didn't mean to hit that Okay, and you can obviously move these as you wish. And when we put the cabochon in, we bend it around. It's a lot less obvious. I mean, if you really look, you can see the two wires there and the loops coming down. But unless you know what you're looking for, it's not so obvious with all the way the wires sit. So that's just how I add in wire if I haven't cut off enough. 